Okay, so it's time to do some practice now. There is a fill in the blanks I'm going to want you to do. So here it is. There are 10 questions here. And we need you to do the first five questions. We'll go through the answers for the first five questions and then we'll do the next five questions. So do these in your book. You must copy them out and then we'll do the next five questions. So pause the video, have a go, and then I will continue in a, in a sec. Okay, so you should have done all five questions. Uh, I'm going to show you the answers to the first five questions so you can mark them. If you still haven't done it, just go back, pause the video. So first for question one, you should have got the following four. Question two, you got two. Question three, question four, and question five. So if you make sure you tick the work that you get correct. And then once you've marked that, I'm going to show you the next five questions. Okay, so here are the next five questions for you to do. These will take a little bit longer, but think about them really carefully. So make sure you can do them all. Okay, pause the video here, and then I'll show you the answers to the next five questions. Okay, so if you have finished, um, I'm going to show you the answers to the next, uh, the bottom five. So there, there are the answers. Pause the video here, mark your work. Um, I don't need to wait because you can just pause it. Okay, so hopefully you have got 10 out of 10. If you haven't, that's fine, but make sure yourself, you give yourself a mark because later on when I ask you to upload the work, I need to see how you've done here. Uh, the last two questions were they're very much um, kind of challenging questions. So if you didn't get those, don't be too disheartened. What's really important is you get the signs correct as well, though. The negative signs, you do need to get make sure those are correct. Okay, so I want to show you an example here. Before I go through it, I want you to actually do the question, and then we'll talk through it. Okay, so you should have done this question now. Uh, pause the video if, you, if that wasn't enough time. And I can see that I can take out a factor, for example, of 3mn. Then I can see 3 times negative 2n take away 3 times 5 is 15 and then mn is already there. So this potentially gives me an answer of 3mn times negative 2m minus 5. Now I'm actually going to do this question again. It's going to be slightly different and we're going to spot what the difference is. So I can see that the numbers, when I look at the numbers, I got negative 6 and negative 15. So the thing that goes into both of those actually is negative 3. So I could put negative 3mn, and then in that case I will end up with negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, mn times m is m squared n, and then I have negative 3 times what is negative 15, well it's going to be negative 5, uh, sorry it's going to be positive 5, uh, and mn is already there. So if I bring this down, I get negative 3mn brackets 2m plus 5. So actually we've got two answers here. The only difference here is that negative sign. So this is, pos this is negative and this is positive. You can see that. So the question is, what do we do in this type of situation? Do we have to take out the negatives always? Because these are going to expand. The same way, um, well, let's let's think about this. And it, the same thing about what happens if you have a decimal. Could you take out a factor of uh, 0 0.5? Because that 0 0.5 does go into 6, and 0 0.5 also goes into 15. So th the, the answer is no. We don't have to always take out the negative. So if you were to put this as your answer, it would be just as right as if you put that as your answer. Um, now, looking at decimals, if we, for example, allow 0 0.2, then you also have to allow 0 0.02 and 0 0.002 and so on. So, in fact, you'd end up with so many factors. Well, what do you think is the word behind that? We will end up with 
yeah, an infinite number of factors. So you'd never know where to stop. So we don't have to include decimals. And when it comes to negatives, negatives would, they would double the amount of factors that we have. So in fact, some mathematicians say that we should include it, but for convention, we don't. So for example, when we did um, numbers like, for example, 12, we know that things like one, or numbers like one, two, three, four, six, 12, they all go into 12. Well, we could also say negative three, negative four, negative six, all of these numbers, if they were negative, would also go. So just by convention, so it's just what we've decided, we don't include negative numbers generally uh, when we are factorizing. Okay, so we're gonna do a true or false here. And you can pause the video for each of these to check if you're right, if you need more time. And, um, but before I show you the answer, I will tell you, so I'm not gonna spoil the answer so uh, or disrupt your learning in that if, that, if you need more time or... Okay, so 12y plus 24 is equal to six brackets, two y plus four. Now I want to notice here, we're talking about equivalences we don't have to worry if it's fully factorized or not, just looking at equivalences. And if we were looking at that, well, six times two y is 12 y, and six times four is 24. So actually in this case, it is true, although it's not fully factorized. So knowing that, let's try question two. Pause the video if you need more time. Okay, so the answer for this is going to be 12y plus 24 that is true and it is fully factorized because 12 is the highest common factor okay question three is this fully factorized is this equivalent or not it doesn't have to be fully factorized okay so in this case it is true one third times one is a third one third times two is two thirds negative 4a minus 4b is this equivalent to the thing on the right well it is true we are going to get the same thing question five true or false pause the video if you need more time okay so i'm going to go through it now negative f times three is negative 3f and I can see negative f times negative 2f is going to be positive 2f squared. So because there are two negatives being multiplied here, um, that should be positive. So this should, just correct it with a green pen, that should be positive. Okay, question six. We just try a quick extension question here. Is this true or not? You can do this in your head. Okay, so you may have noticed a half times 10, half t times 10k, well, half times 10 is five, and t times k is t, kt or tk, so that's correct. And we have half t times negative 16, so that's gonna be negative 8t, that's also correct. And we've got half t times negative 8t, so it's going to be negative 4t squared. So this is, in fact, true. So give yourself a mark out of 6 for this, and then make sure you upload that when I ask you to upload it. Not yet, though. Okay. Now, there is independent work here for you to do. There are nine questions. Pause the video, do all nine questions, show all the working out. So I expect to see the upside down to, uh, bus stop method for um, all of these questions. Um, it shouldn't take too long to do this. So maybe I would say about 10 minutes max. Okay, pause the video. Now, if you have your answers and you've done the answers, I'm gonna show you the correct answers. So here are the answers which you can use to mark your work. So all of these on the screen, 
I'm not going to read them out. So give yourself a mark out of nine. Uh, remember, I need to see the working out for this neatly in your books.